This video will go over the different regions of the, of the brain, the major regions. And the first thing you're going to notice is you got the cerebrum. People are familiar with that. Medulla oblongata, they're familiar with that. They're familiar with the cerebellum. What about the diencephalon, the midbrain? And first thing you probably notice is in parentheses, these three things all make up something called the brain stem. So we're going to walk through this. Brought to you by Curious Moranland. So let's, I'm going to go back and forth from looking at a brain model. And I've got two brain models. I have a contact, intact one. And I also have a what we would call a mid-sagittal cut so that we can see the medial view. And later, and we're going to walk through and talk about, through about a bunch of this. So let's put this here. And for my students, if you see this PowerPoint, that you got in class, this is a good link to click. And I'm not going to show that now, but let's look at the precentral, the postcentral gyrus, uh, one and the central sulcus. Quick review: uh, gyrus is the ridge here, and the sulcus is the is the down indentation. If this was a flat sheet of cells, and basically what happens is it starts to curve down and fold during your embryonic development. So this is a gyrus, this is a sulcus. Now they're, you can see they're tightly packed. And then we have some that are good, that go really deep. That would be a fissure, like this longitudinal fissure that we see here. Quick review. If you want to pause the video at any time, I just remind students about what a gyrus and a sulcus is. So let's look at a couple different views. So this is a, obviously a interior uh, view on this side, posterior, this would be a superior view looking straight down on it. And so this is more of the sulcus, the gyrus, and I want to walk through all this and hopefully this video won't be too long. But generically the cerebrum, the left and the right hemisphere, we all know about left brain, right brain, we'll talk about that, and the corpus callosum that connects those the, the tracks that we see there. So this is a cross section of a sheep's brain. And let's go back to here and point out on the model. So you have your frontal lobe. All right. Then if you were to kind of rotate it around, you'll see you have your parietal, your parietal. Think about this right here. This is your temporal lobe where your um, you know, temporal uh, you think about your temple, your tem temporal bone. The, remember these these uh, regions are named by the, the same names that we use for our skull. And let's move around. I think we've identified everything. Let's point out the cerebellum. And we can later on, we'll talk about the medulla oblongata, the pons. And I'm going to go ahead and put this one into position. So how do we, if we were to do a cut down the longitudinal fissure, a mid-sagittal section, we'll see a medial view. And that's really what we're going to focus. If you had your lateral view, that would be this. Here's your cerebellum, your temporal, your frontal lobe, your parietal lobe, and again, your occipital lobe. This is a cross-section from a sheep's brain. So what I want to do is I would pause the video for a second, study this. My students are given a blank of this picture in class to label, and they basically come up with this. So what we're going to do is we've seen the lobes. Let's talk about the diencephalon, the midbrain, and so let's start first. So the diencephalon, what actually makes the diencephalon? And that would be your thalamus, your hypothalamus, your, um, you see the pineal gland? Well, that's actually part of the epithalamus. So we got the word epi and hypo in relation to this big structure here, the thalamus. So here's the corpus callosum. This connects the right hemisphere from the left hemisphere to the left hemisphere. And so again, the diencephalon, here's a sheep brain. You got the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and the epithalamus. They make up something called the diencephalon. So do this. This is the, our um, quiz part of the video. So look at the video, pause the video, see if you can identify it. And we'll point out where it is here. and label. So again, here's, here's your thalamus. Right here, this is the thalamus. It's got this intermediate mass here. On top of the thalamus is 
a one of your two choroid plexus, which are going to produce cerebral spinal fluid. Here's the third ventricle is on top of the thalamus. Now, where's the fourth ventricle? Well, that's right here. There's no first. Well, actually, there is. The first and second, we don't call them first and second. We call them lateral. One's in this part of the hemisphere of the corpus callosum, and then the other one is in the other hemisphere. So we just said we identified the thalamus. So that's right here. And this is that choroid plexus, and this is the third ventricle. If you were to look at a sheep's brain or any brain, and you could actually take your probe and stick it out in here, you would see the lateral ventricle. So I'm not going to leave it on too long. So the basic format for the next minute or so is I'll ask a question, say, hey, can you identify it? I'll show where it is. I'll leave some text that describes this basic function. Really, this is the most this is the relay center for sensory input. Those ascending tracks coming up up the spinal cord, they're going to actually hub at the thalamus and that's going to direct. You notice this, it's going to direct the impulse or the sensory input to the right part of the proper part of the brain so that we can interpret it and have the proper response, the sensory and motor responses. This is the hub. That's the, the, the thalamus. So, um, back to, so that was the thalamus. So think about the word hypo means below, epi means on top or, or behind, or slightly behind on top. So let's look at the cartoon picture. Where's the hypothalamus? Right here. Here's our hypothalamus. And the, let's go to the, uh, I'm going to go to the model in a second. But let's show the epithalamus and I'm going to point out all three on the model. So you can pause the video, um, get a basic understanding of certain functions that go are associated with this part of the brain. And this is a key one. See the pituitary gland. I always associate the hypothalamus with the, I, it's on the pituitary gland side, versus the epithalamus, which is going to be right here. So let's find the pineal gland. Follow the line. There's the pineal gland. It's part of the epithalamus. So associate the pineal gland with the epithalamus and associate the pituitary gland, the two Ps, with the hypothalamus. Hypo below, and here again is the thalamus. So well, let's do this. I'm going to pause the video for you to look at that. And then I'm going to go back, leave this up, and go back to the model. Did you notice that if you look at it, it almost looks like a face? Here's the lips. Here's the eye, the intermediate mass. So, so the diencephalon is the thalamus with the choroid plexus and the th on top of it, the third ventricle. The pineal gland, which is the epithalamus. So think about it. this is behind or on slightly on top. Okay, and then the hypothalamus, and here's the pituitary gland. This is the optic chiasma. So now what we're going to do, that's the diencephalon. Now we're going to talk about the midbrain. And don't really have a, the models are hard to see some parts, but some parts are easy, like the, like the ponds and the, a couple other stuff. So let's look at the, at them. So, that was the diencephalon. Now let's look at the brain, midbrain. Actually, the brain stem. But you notice they're both, so I'm going to talk about the midbrain and give you some structures to identify, like this one right here and this one. And then we'll talk about the ponds and the medulla oblongata, they're all part of the brainstem. So, midbrain. What constitutes the midbrain? So now, if you go back to this hypothalamus and the epithalamus over here and the thalamus, you notice there's a little tunnel here, all right? That separates this structure and this structure, the two parts of the midbrain, all right? So you have something called the cerebral peduncle. The peduncle is next to the pons. Think about P and P. This is the pons. We'll talk about that in a second. We have these two structures, the corpora quadrigemina. So let's look at some text that describes them first. So we've got these two bulging um, sections here of fiber tracts. One's called the cerebral peduncle, and you got four rounded parts. Quad stands for, for four, so corpora quadrigemina. And let's go back to this particular structure. You can see them. So the corpora quadrigemina and the, the peduncle. So this is right here, actually the peduncle right here, and this is the corpora quadrigemina. 
But what separates them is the cerebral aqueduct. Let's go back to the picture. The cerebral aqueduct separates the corpora, I'm sorry, the central peduncle, I should have said cerebral, sorry, and these structures called the corporal quadrigemina. So if you notice, they're, they're, they're split, they're separated. You see these two bodies, you see these two bodies, you, bodies here. And they're easier to see on the, straight, on the sheep brain depending on how you uh, hold it. So let's go ahead and go to the pons. I want to speed, kind of speed up this video. We've been going too long here. So that's the mid, that's all the midbrain, which technically are all part of the brain stem. So the brain, midbrain has the, the, the cerebral peduncle, the corporal, corporal quadrigemina, and then we'll, and then we also have uh, the pons and the medulla oblongata. Those three things make up the brain stem. And just a reminder, the midbrain it actually has those little subparts. So let's go to back to here. So brain stem. Okay. So the brain stem is basically, as we said earlier, the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata. So, so you can see the pons, for, and right below, maybe if you do it like this, you might be able to see. Here's the pons right here. This is the cerebral peduncle. And these are, these are the corporate quadrigemina. You can see there's one, two. Now, well, that only looks like two, but remember, you've got another lobe that goes here. So one, two, and then the ones that will be on this side, that make up the four. You don't see that. It's hard to see that. So this is the quadrigemina. And how do I know that? I see the cerebral aqueduct. There's the fourth ventricle. This is the cerebral peduncle. Let's rotate. Here's the pons. And then this right here is the medulla ob oblongata. And then once you get down here, you're at the spinal cord. All right. So I think I'm kind of done with the model, and I do need to finish up this video. So let's look at medulla ob pons. Okay, here it is. Right there. As you can see, there's the pons. All right. And then you got the. You might have noticed I've been working being superior and working my way or inferior. I've been working down, right? superior and working inferior. And so then you got the medulla oblongata, and then you notice where the, the this the, this is part of the cerebral spinal fluid, where that ends, it doesn't end, but that's running down into the spinal cord. So last thing, I'm gonna just finish up this video, we'll go, there's our pons, and then just another picture of the sheep brain. There's our medulla oblongata, and if you want to go and pause the video for the next two, the medulla oblongata and the cerebellum, here are their basic functions. Well, these are what, they're your control centers. This is why when you get damage to the medulla oblongata, you know, blood pressure, breathing, the swallowing, that heart rate, all right? And lastly, cerebellum. In the old days, we used to say cerebrum, medulla oblongata, cerebellum. But now we realize it's much more complicated, and that's why we have the six regions. So there's the cerebellum, all right, and the two hemispheres, involuntary coordination and body movements. So that pretty much is your video. And we've gone through the major regions, the six regions, and the little subcategories. And again, pause the video. I'd watch it again. So thanks for watching.